Imagine a world where extinction didn't exist. A world where the endangered orangutans and rhinos were a tiny concern. A world where even the Tasmanian tigers and the dodos would live among us in the modern day. This world can become a reality with the use of de-extinction technology. De-extinction seems to be a topic that is currently a balanced argument between scientists in a variety of fields. Ever since the birth of the cloned Dolly the Sheep in 1996, wondrous ideas were sparked among scientists of endangered species being saved and even some prehistoric giants being brought back into the modern world. But is this actually a good idea? Some scientists seem to think that de-extinction technology will increase biodiversity on Earth, strengthening ecosystems and filling more habitats and niches. Others seem to think it will bring some unwanted guests into our world, such as resurrected pathogens, which cause disease or invasive species, which can destroy native plants and wildlife. One of the popular winning arguments of the against side is that de-extinction technology at this stage is much too expensive, it's inefficient and risky. In other words, de-extinction is much too early in its development phase to successfully release resurrected species into the wild. This is the agreement that most have come to, but why do we think this? Chances are our opinions on de-extinction will change as time passes as we progress in biological sciences continue. For those who are already confused, let me give you an overview of what de-extinction technology is, also known as resurrection biology. De-extinction is a scientific process of resurrecting species that have died out and this could be possible through the use of selecting breeding, genetics and reproductive cloning technologies. The first successful attempt of de-extinction technology was used on a special breed of sheep. Using the sheep's DNA, scientists could recreate a perfect copy of it. The sheep was nicknamed Dolly, who was a special breed of sheep and the new last of its kind, and lived from 1996 till 2003. The scientific breakthrough was achieved by Keith Campbell, Ian Wilmot and colleagues at the Roslyn Institute, part of the University of Edinburgh, Scotland, and at the biotechnology company PPL Therapeutics, based near Edinburgh. It wasn't until the second attempt of the technology where debates surrounding it began. A Pyrenean ibex, which went extinct in 2000, was resurrected in 2003, but died shortly after being born. This attempt was made by Spanish Center of Agro-Nutrition Research. A finding from this source showed us a lot of candidate species which are planned for resurrection with de-extinction technology. The list included the quagga, aruchos, florina island giant tortoise, passenger pigeon, health hen, little bush mower, and the most controversial of all, the woolly mammoth. These creatures were chosen with care so that nothing too prehistoric and unfamiliar to science was brought back. Very strong debates then arose from the idea of resurrected prehistoric creatures such as the woolly mammoth. DNA is short for deox deoxyribonucleic acid and is the hereditary material in humans and all other organisms. Strands of DNA contain a code that is followed when an organism is born. It is the building blocks of what an organism looks like and how it behaves. It decides their appearance and all their biological functions. If you could obtain DNA from an extinct species, you could use that to impregnate its closest living relative, thus creating a hybrid of the two creatures. Editing genomes in a petri dish beforehand can help scientists control what the hybrid's appearance will be by turning off the characteristics inherited by the living relative allowing the features of the extinct animal to be dominant. The gene editing process involves CRISPR, short for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Paleodromic Repeats. Using CRISPR, scientists can select characteristics from an extinct organism and make them appear in a close living relative in the modern day, despite any missing parts in the DNA sequence that may have decayed over time. As the missing parts in the genetic code are replaced from that of the living relative, DNA only has a lifespan of roughly 600 years, but when it is in a preserver, such as ice, it can last much longer and even long enough for scientists to extract the appropriate amount of DNA from even prehistoric creatures. This is not the only method that can be used for de-extinction, but is the most effective and the most commonly used today. 
According to some scientific reports, university students from Harvard in the USA have plans to resurrect a woolly mammoth by taking the DNA from the bodies of mammoths which have been trapped in permafrost for thousands of years and impregnating an Asian elephant with it. The Asian elephant would then potentially give birth to a woolly mammoth, Asian elephant hybrid. So how can this technology benefit the environment and society today? While there are many benefits de-extinction can provide to the world, are they vastly outnumbered by the number of costs and consequences generated by de-extinction? The technology and methods applied during de-extinction are expensive and inefficient as they are in early stages of development. Many of the extinct species planned to be resurrected originally died out due to loss of habitat. If we brought them back, where would they go? Some of the candidate species, such as the woolly mammoth, had habitats in a prehistoric environment which no longer exist in today's world. Endangered species require conservation, which uses resources, resources which are often constrained or lacking. When a species is resurrected, it will also be considered an endangered species, which will not only be hard to conserve, but may also take away concentration from the species alive today that are endangered. Newly resurrected species that originally became extinct a long time ago will suffer from low evolutionary resilience and poor evolutionary experience. This means that a woolly mammoth today could die from a simple change in temperature or from a modern pathogen like the common cold. Biotic and abiotic fatters in the modern ecosystems could be very likely affect the lives of the resurrected species, even if they have evolutionary resilience and experience or not. Other unexpected issues in ecosystems could also occur from resurrected species. For example, the species could become invasive or dangerous disease-causing pathogens could be resurrected with an organism and released back into the world. Invasive species could become like the wild boar invasion in Queensland, Australia. The boars made their way onto a cargo ship and were accidentally shipped over into Australia where they began to destroy property, spread disease, kill native species and even injure and kill local residents. Resurrected pathogens could cause many local issues but could also become a worldwide pandemic similar to our current COVID-19 crisis. If so many negative things could happen, why would we even try de-extinction? Well, there are many pros to this method as well. De-extinction could provide an opportunity for humans to rectify past harms inflicted on other species, as well as to expand species biodiversity. Biodiversity is the most complex and vital thing on Earth. Without it, the human race could not exist. It is the variety of animals, plants, genes and ecosystems present on Earth. The more of them and the more diverse they are, the healthier the world is. Biodiversity provides us with the air we breathe, the water we drink and the food that we eat. The extinction has also helped fuel scientific progress in a number of different fields, especially knowledge in de developmental biology and genetics. The extinction can be used to make creatures living today more resilient to their ecosystem and adapt to certain things quicker than usual. This will protect species from human innovation, which can cause destruction of habitat and environment. It will also help further preserve keystone species, which allow ecosystems to thrive. The extinction will also be the perfect solution to replacing predators missing from a food chain or web. Without a predator, a food chain can receive massive negative impacts and even could die with all the species that dwell within. With the extinction, a predator can be brought back from the dead and re-released into the wild, fixing the gap in the food chain. Even with lots of thorough research on both sides of the de-extinction debate, it is still hard to determine which side is correct. A survey was conducted among students at Concordia College Black Forest Primary School and workers at the Women's and Children's Hospital to see what people in our society today think about de-extinction technology. The majority of people believe that de-extinction is a good idea because of how it can protect endangered species today. Most were also wary of how prehistoric creatures we know almost nothing about could cause damage to modern ecosystems and human society, like a Jurassic Park scenario. Some answers that could lead to a possible conclusion were the ones that agreed with the use of de-extinction, but believed that scientists should become more educated in the biological fields before doing so. 
This is so that the de-extinction process will be cheap, efficient and successful. The majority of people believe that de-extinction is possible through scientific means, however a great number were still unsure. Most people are also unsure whether the extinction will help the environment or not, but the great number who believe that it will help have a very good reason behind it. The individuals who do not believe the technology will help are in small in number and compared to the people who do. It was stated that resurrected species could be modified to meet other animals' needs. For example, resurrected prey becoming a more effective food source for predators, strengthening a food tree. A whopping 92.5% of people who took the survey believe that endangered species alive today should be the main focus of biological scientists rather than already extinct ones, which matches up well with the 75.7% .7 who believe that bringing back prehistoric species is a bad idea. It seems that the creatures we have today are valued more and thus must be protected. Among the people who took the survey, the Tasmanian tiger was the most popular choice for a creature that could be resurrected from extinction. So, from our information we'd gathered from scientists, debates and the vast expanse of the internet, plus a survey among a modern audience, we have come to the conclusion that de-extinction is much too early in its development stage to be used properly by scientists or otherwise. More progress must be made in biological fields including gene editing and selective breeding and generally more should be learned about ecosystems and how we can manage them. This should be all done before a resurrected species is released back into the world, so the technology can be efficient, cheap, effective and successful. Until then, let's value the animals we have in our world today and protect our endangered species. So maybe we can't live in a world alongside woolly mammoths and dinosaurs, but the world is still full of wild wonders for us to explore.